We're live on both? We're live on YouTube. Wait. Checking connection. Checking connection. All right. You're live. So here we are, guys. My name is Alan, Center Consoles Only, and we've had tons of questions about our Center Consoles Only 23 reef runner back there, and we realized we haven't really gone into the, the boat in a lot of detail. I, we have a million videos out there on the boat. We're on it pretty much every week doing our CCO waterfront content creation. Um, so really what we want to do now, kind of show you what we have in the boat, how we set it up. Um, it's here in the warehouse in our office right now in air conditioning, so baby's in a, in a good position. So we're gonna actually go through. I want you guys to ask your questions. We have Eric behind the camera. He's gonna try to spit those out to me as the video goes through, and I'll try to answer as many as I can um, throughout this live video. So this is our office here. We got cameras everywhere. We have our dock side back there. If you haven't seen that, it's where we do our product reviews and all that kind of stuff. Storage, a lot of our apparel comes out of here. A lot of the shipping happens here. And then this is a space we have for the reef runner. So starting here a, at the transom area, and actually let me turn on the, uh, the, trans the transom lights. So as you see from back here, we have macros lighting, LED underwater lights. Now, as you can see, these are very bright. They actually are installed with just a tiny hole you drill through. You don't have to create a huge hole like the standard traditional lights. They're LED, you can have them on outside of the water, they're not gonna burn out. And then you just apply them with a silicone, I believe 5200 or 4200, and those things aren't going anywhere. These are single color in that bluish white, and they have been incredible. And we actually sell these on our openfisherman.com website. So go to openfisherman.com, search Macris, you can find these and the under gunnel lights that we're gonna show you in a minute. So. Starting right back here, we went with a single V8 300. And for those of you that followed this build from the beginning, we actually had a V6 350 Rado on here first. It was kind of a um, borrowed scenario once we first got the boat. This one with the low end torque and just overall power far exceeds the 350 in performance, not on top end, but just pretty much everything else. Out of the hole, it's incredible. We have an Eco Inertia, I believe it was a 16 on here. 16 by 19 uh, pitch. So we went through a few different props over at Lake X and this was also the best fit on this setup in particular. So this outboard, we can't speak more highly of it. Incredibly quiet, it has that sport exhaust if you want that loud rumble as well. So perfect pairing with the 23 we do about 56 miles an hour top end. And that's with all the weight that we have on this boat, which you're gonna see in a few minutes, including a Sea Keeper One. So everything is beefed up on this boat. Not to mention that the Reef Runner is already a hefty beefed up 23 foot boat. They overbuild everything. So this thing is strong, solid to the core and Reef Runner, Reef Runner does an excellent job with this boat. But you're gonna see we've changed out pretty much everything. We went with Lavorsi 1050 22 inch tabs, which are pretty much overkill for this boat. But as you can see, it extends our running surface beyond this Euro transom, which helps out the performance and, uh, and getting you on plane, which again, we barely hit the tab at all. Just very little tab, but that little tap on, the, on one of these tabs makes a, makes a huge difference. So. Um, we've noticed some improvement on the performance. Definitely not necessary. Performed well without it, but those things are as bad as they get. Shout out to Lavorsi for those. Holding this whole thing up, we have a rocket trailer. Again, we try to pair up with what we feel are the best of the best in the industry and rocket for sure from the quality of the trailer that they put together to the service, just to the whole group there has been phenomenal. We could not be more happy with this, with this trailer right here. I mean, this thing is serious. It's got integrated brakes. We got some stuff stacked in here so you can't really see the whole thing. We got our life jackets that got soaked uh, through some rain recently before we put, brought the boat into the, uh, to the warehouse. So we got that laid out. But incredible product. Definitely check out Rocket Trailers if you're looking for a trailer on your boat. 
Um, now working our way up, we went with a Whisper Gray on everything. So the hull is a Whisper Gray. You're gonna see the cap and interior liner, console, leaning post, everything is Whisper Gray. Um, and we'll get to that. This wrap right here was done by Glarb Wrapped. Um, we got Ryan Sandoval over there, which does amazing design work. He's done some of the crazier boats you might've seen throughout the in internet. So I reached out to him with an idea of this geometric camo, the, the, the color uh, we, the color palette that we wanted to go with. Um, and then he created this thing. You can see there's shadows, you know, it has a 3D effect. Um, and it definitely makes a statement when this boat's on the water and that's the whole point. You know, so when we go by on this thing, people can spot it from a distance and, and know that it's us coming down and, and just, you know, creating something that's more of a showpiece um, when we do take it to events and boat shows and things like that. So. Glarb wrapped again, you can see his logo right here. You can find them on Instagram and probably all the other social media platforms. So we're gonna work, work our way up here. You're gonna see we have sea deck throughout the boat and we went with a three layer. This is a thicker option, but we were able to put the black, the Bahama blue and the, and the gray in here. So it's a nice way to get up on the boat here. We actually added here, and you're gonna see this, the Edson Comfort Grips, which you're gonna see up on the, uh, the piping on the console as well. Just gives you a great grip to be able to jump up on the boat when you're you know, at the sandbar or spear fishing or anything like that. These, this boat doesn't have a side door and we kind of like that. Um, so it's a, a great little option. This is uh, created by Edson and you can also get this on openfisherman.com. The sea deck we used Castaway Customs, and this was a cool design that we haven't seen much of, but definitely uh, liked the way how it worked and kind of broke up the geometric camel from the interior with the interior. So Eric, if you can work your way up without killing yourself on that ladder. He's holding two phones right now. We're on Instagram and Face uh, and uh, YouTube, I'm sorry. So he's balancing with, uh, with no hands. As you see here in the transom, we went with Gemlux hardware everywhere. You can see all the rod holders throughout our Gemlux. We got the combos right here. We have a couple of Ocean Tamer bean bags. Actually, we have one because I dropped one, flew out on the Palmetto Expressway. So I only have one, but put those bean bags right here and this is a great spot to hold a drink. And then when you're fishing, obviously it's an excellent spot to fish from. Electric reels, you can fly a kite from here, put your three rods set up right down the middle of the transom, and it actually works out pretty well for a, for a small 23 footer. We went with the uh, sea deck throughout. We didn't use any of the standard upholstery. This stuff is pretty streamlined and sturdy, so it does everything you need, you know, when you're holding up against it. But it's, it doesn't come out this far like a standard uh, upholstery might. So we like the fact that it was able to keep this nice and open rod holders throughout, our pop-up cleats. Again, all from Gemlux. I'm gonna show you more products we have from them as well. So measuring stick here for the few fish we come across, those rare occasions. And then there's a lot going on back here, which I'd like to show you. Are there any questions going on there? What's the difference between the new 23 reef runner and this one, the new open? Okay, the difference here, we actually got the last two piece. Now they're actually creating a three piece, which is extremely nice. Uh, we missed that one just because there was going to be a while to get it and uh, we actually like the forward seating option which we'll show you. But this was a two piece um, hull. It's a cap liner all together and the hull mixed in. The other one is the deck liner and then the, the cap is a third piece. So it's a really nice setup. Supposedly, you know, it makes a stronger overall finish. We haven't had any issue at all here, no complaints, but the three piece is definitely a big step forward that Reef Runner uh, took. and. Maybe on the next one, we'll take a look at that one. But definitely, you know, reach out to them. They'll give you all the details on it, but that's the main difference. And you can either do a completely open bow or the forward seating that, that we had there. So we'll show you that later. Back here in the transom, if you have other questions, spit them out in there. We have two compartments. This is basically cooler storage. Um, and this one, since we went with a little bit something different, this one actually has a live well, a little mini live well integrated into it. You can keep a few baits alive for a while. Um, works out, we didn't do a ton of fishing on the boat. Like I said, it's more kind of a, 
a media content cre creator for us and kind of a showboat. But if you do want to fish, we got plenty of the amenities to do it, and that line wall gets the job done. Um, otherwise, Reef Runner actually creates a leaning post that has an integrated line well in this back end, backrest, and the whole thing. We actually got this from Vandalized Boats, uh, some friends of ours, and this was a piece that was cut out, and we kind of custom made this little pod because um, we didn't want to take up the space back here. It was meant to hold camera gear, and uh, we wanted the more roomy scenario, and, and for us in particular, you know, doing this right here is more than plenty. And this actually, I forgot how many millimeter uh, thickness this is. It's the thickest one they make, and it's surprisingly comfortable. It's plenty good um, to rest against when you're running in just about any, any uh, weather condition or anything you're gonna wanna run on on a 23 footer. So we put the four rod holders, Gemlux, right here. I believe these are 15 degree. This already has an angle towards it, so it pops the rods right behind the uh, hard top rocket launcher here. And as you can see, we went with seven rod holders, uh, five vertical, and then we have the two kingfish rigs um, going in either direction. So excellent hard top. The piping was from Reef Marine Welding, Francisco over there, and this is three inch pipe on the base, I believe two inch up top. So over overbuilt again. We wanted we, we built this separate from uh, Reef Runner. The hard top is from Reef Runner, but if you can look at this, this whole setup can be on a 34 footer, no problem. Um, it's just you know something we decided to uh, do with a 23. We wanted to build a rare 23 footer and you know one that was as unique as you can get and i think we we got pretty close to that so one thing they do here actually pop down this transom area they have these access panels so really easy to get back to your trim tabs you got your uh, valves right here. Everything is uh, flows overboard, so any water that makes it onto the deck um, doesn't end up in your bilge. It actually flows all the way from your hatches um, down to these two valves, which exits underneath the Euro transom. So you get none of that junk under under uh, under your bilge and into your bilge area. And then the access to be able to just work on things like this is is very useful you've been around boats long enough so we definitely appreciate that and you got your bilge area respectable for a 23 nice and clean you can see our 2kw transducer down there we have all kinds of uh gear that naptronics hooked us up with from ray marine which gives us side view capabilities i mean this thing can can find just anything that's underwater um and we have, I believe, a full tutorial with Naptronics uh, about that on our YouTube channel. So definitely go check that out. We've done uh, a lot of work with, with uh, the guys from Naptronics and what they set up was, was excellent. So I won't get into all that right now. You can see we have two boxes. These are just storage boxes, port and starboard. The reason we didn't finish the boxes, which obviously is an option, they end up slightly bigger this way, and we just wanted the storage space. We're, we're bringing cameras, tripods, drones, things like that. So we decided to leave a lot of these boxes unfinished, which gave us extra room to be able to store more gear. So you have more questions? Hardware on the T-top, does it show or no? Hardware on the T-top does not show. On the, on the top you're talking about? Yeah. Reef Runner just oh. answers saying it doesn't show. Oh, Reef Runner's there. There you go. Yeah. Well, you can take a look. What they, what they actually created was the center area, which you can, you can take a look again from underneath. Drop down. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. You can see this little drop down space, which we got some watermarks here. We got to finish wiping it down, but everything is underneath this. So you have nothing showing up top. Super clean finish from the top of the hard top. Excellent design and work from Reef Runner. They, put a lot of time and effort into their designs and you can see this hardtop probably rivals most of what you see out there and a lot of what you see on even some of the big name boats where you see the um, the nuts and bolts and all the stuff on the hardtop roof. So this is a very well designed hardtop. Um, we have Gemlux gear everywhere which again we got to clean but these are the bases for the uh, shade system. Man this thing is really dirty. Oh. 
So if you look at the top of this, we have uh, the Gemlux shade system right there. So that actually brings two carbon fiber posts outward, and then you can actually shade this whole um, back cockpit area. And then up top we have their Grand Slam Gemlux outriggers, which we have the carbon fiber poles right here. This whole thing weighs like a pound. Incredible. And very strong. Gemlux does excellent work. They've been a great partner of ours on this project, and we definitely appreciate their association on, on, on everything on this boat. It's what we chose. We've always been a fan of Gemlux, so um, it was nice to be able to work with them and try out different products here on this on this boat. So we have the two outriggers, like we said there. We have Clarion sound system throughout. I believe we have uh, six, these are seven inch speakers, and then we have a 10 inch sub right here in the leaning post. So for those of you that don't know, Clarion was actually acquired by JL Audio, and immediately they came out with a new product line, which was incredible quality. If you look at these from a distance, right from here, you, you would think they're a JL, uh, JL Audio product, and when you actually turn them on and listen to it, um, the sound is right there as well. So what they did with Clarion is basically offer similar quality, but you have it at a more, I guess, reachable price point. So. Not a cheap speaker by any point, but we have actually had tremendous experience. They light up, you can change them to different colors, match up your under gunnel lighting, which you can see under here. You have like 200 different colors on your under gunnel, and I don't remember right now what you have on the Clarion, but you can match it up and create quite the light show in here, and then the sound is phenomenal. We also have the two uh, six inch speakers, I believe, up here in the hard top downward facing. So you mix this up here and in this area, the sound is, is incredible, but also just about anywhere else in the boat, you got great sound. Here we didn't have the ability to put uh, more speakers, but we have two. We were thinking about actually putting back here rear facing a little bit higher so they can get up and over the gunnel. If you're hanging out in the sandbar and want that sound to kind of resonate out to you in that area. So keep asking questions if, you, if you're seeing them. Best fuel economy you've gotten so far. Best fuel economy, I think we were doing like two and a half, like two and a half miles per gallon, I think is uh, roughly what we do. I mean, usually we cruise this boat 40, 42 miles an hour, and we're doing something around that point, two and a half, 2.5, 2.6 uh, miles per gallon. So we never really run it hard, but you know, it's very fuel, uh, uh, fuel efficient. Efficient, there it is. We got 100 gallons of fuel here, so just do the math. Um, you get a pretty quality uh, range on this boat for a 23-footer. So going right here into the command center, uh, we worked again with Netronics to set up a Raymarine system, and we have the full Raymarine package. So we have two Axiom XLs, 16-inch um, here. It, you can see it's all touchscreen. You have side charts, fish finder. You can actually connect your drone to this video. We have a FLIR up on the hard top.